Hello everyone, welcome back. I want to show you guys something that I have not seen in a while. Okay, I have not seen a carry handle on top of one of my AR AR-15s for a very long time. And um, the reason why I ended up putting this on here, right, is because this AR here, uh, this is, a, by the way, this is a Palmetto. Um, uh, basically, when I originally bought this upper, it had this plastic handguard here. And uh, the problem with a plastic handguard that I found is that I just couldn't mount things on it. Like I couldn't put a light on it, um, or if I wanted to, um, um, if I wanted to uh, attach a bipod to this, right? I couldn't put a bipod on this. So that was the issue I had with the uh, plastic uh, guard on the AR-15. And um, initially, I had the idea of, hey, let me find the rail that will fit onto the bayonet lug over here uh and that would allow me to either attach a light or attach a uh, uh uh a bipod at the time and this is probably going back about three years ago okay i, I couldn't find one okay so uh, the next best thing was hey let's get a quad rail okay so i got the quad rail um now his thing this is a a nine inch a nine inch uh plastic guard all right, so the quad rail, nine inches long, uh, weighs a pound. So this adds a significant weight to that gun. Um, so anyway, I kept it there for about three years. I was having fun shooting it. Um, I do have a couple of other ARs that have the A2 post, but those have a six inch guard. So when I put the guard, when I put the um, um, the quad rail on those with the, the six inch quad rails, it, it wasn't so awkward. But the nine inch quad rail on that, on this particular AR, I, I just found it very awkward. So um, recently, um, somebody said, hey, you know, actually somebody sh uh, that was training at a range um, showed up with a, with a rail, um, a bare nut lug rail over here. And like, that, ah, that's really cool. Where'd you get that? And they said, well, you can get it at Botox. Uh, and that's really awesome. I'm like, I haven't, uh, you know, I, I didn't think anybody was going to make these things again. So I got this little bayonet lug that would fit here. And that gave me, actually goes into the back, goes there. And then you use a uh, little Allen key, tighten this up. Did I go all the way? No, I think I, I think I, I didn't go in all the way. Nope, I know what I did. Get this back out, put it backwards. That's got going like this. There it goes. Now that'll lock in place. There you go. All right. So now I've got a, a lug here that I can attach a light if I want to. Okay. And that's like great. Now I can take off that that quad rail. So that's the reason why the quad rail came off of this gun. And then when I had the plastic on there, I'm like, you know what? Let's put a carry handle on here, right? Let's go completely retro with this thing. So that's what I did. I put the carry handle here. I took off the red dot that was on this. Um, now this carry handle that's on here uh, came from my Colt, okay? Um, my, my Colt's already set up with, it's got, again, that's got the six inch cloud rail on it. So that's okay. Um, and I, um, so I decided to leave that on there. It's already set up with a light, with a pressure switch. So I didn't want to mess with that gun. Uh, I said, I brought the carry handle and I put it on here. Now, uh, this one over here, it has these big bolts over here to attach the carry handle to the Picatinny rail, right? So this carry handle attaches on the Picatinny rail. You can actually see it under over here. Um, only thing I don't like about this is these gigantic bolts over here. Uh, if I, at some point, I find smaller nuts that will go on here, maybe with an Allen key that will tighten up. I'll, I'll get those and I'll, and I'll replace these big bolts because they look kind of weird on there. Um, so anyway, so today, I mean, I've had this on here for a few days. And today I said, hey, let's try a little bit of distant shooting. Um, so initially, I started out with Tula, right? Just, just, just cheap old Tula over here. And mind you, I haven't shot these type of sights, specifically with, you know, the carry handle uh, with A2 post in at least three years at this point. So... I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to hit the target at 100 yards. Um, so basically, I used the 25-yard zero. Now, the, the, 
I drove it at 25 yards, which is just in front of those rims over there. The reason why I use a 25 yard zero instead of the uh, 50 yard zero that I normally use is because these um, there's 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 a uh, um, basically you do the, you do your elevation adjustment from the front over here and your windage adjustment from the back, but then there's another uh, rotating knob over here uh, to adjust for yardage. Okay, so when it's all the way down right you're and you use a 25 yard zero your second zero should be at 300 yards and that's why if you look over here uh, i don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this in the camera so well it says let's see if i can get a focus where are you there you go right there you can see it says six three okay so and then as you rotate this around right see now you can see the four see can you focus if you can focus then you rotate some more, that brings you to a five, right? There's your five. And then if you come all the way around, that brings you all the way back around. And now you're at six, but look look how high you are up here. You see how that's moved up, right? As opposed to when I roll this down back to that first position, you see how it goes back down? All right, so right there, it's set for the 300 yard zero, okay? Um, so the reason why I, I decided to zero this thing at 25 yards is because I wanted um, this this uh, range adjustment up here to be accurate, okay, uh, to work. Now, normally, it's like I, if I had just bought this carry handle from like uh, Amazon or eBay, one of those places, I, I wouldn't trust it so much to be uh, accurate. However, this came on my Colt, um, so that's why I have a little bit of confidence that uh, that this may actually work out and I, I look forward to actually testing that out at a different range where I have a lot more distance uh, to shoot at So that's the reason why I decided to use the 25 yard zero So I, uh, I took this out to 100 yards today and first I started off with Tula Right because I said you know, what, let me just use some cheap ammo here uh, Because I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get on the paper Okay, I haven't shot these type of sights in so long and basically for those of you not aware you got a circle in the back basically your ghost ring the post over here you match them up like that right so that's what you're looking looking for um so i shot this with the tula and i was actually very pleasantly surprised now my point of aim here like my post was at the bottom of the paper right because here's the thing with the 25 yard zero at 100 yards i'm going to be about 10 to 12 inches high and let's see where i'm at yeah i came in about 10 inches high over here um, now that's what the tool uh, if I was using let's say a faster bullet if I was using a Because uh, it's 55 grains if I was using because tool tends to be about hundred feet per second slower If I was using uh, anything other than tool on 55 grains, uh, I would probably be another two inches higher So I would be about 12 inches high um, So my group with tool Okay, now this one over here I, I'm pretty sure that was just bad ammo because I know I didn't lower my post that much I didn't throw it off that much though. so um, I mean the total grouping with Tula including that bad round uh, is five inches between the furthest two shots okay uh, now if we discount this one here which I'm pretty sure was due to bad ammo or worst case scenario you know I pulled it um, I've got a two and a half inch group with with Tula so I think that's like wow okay I really wasn't expecting um, to, to, to get a two and a half inch cluster with those iron sights using Tula um, and I said you know what this has proven itself let's get out some good ammo so I got out the uh, Sierra Match King okay I, I just recently got this you're gonna see me doing a lot of testing with this uh, so I took this out and now this time I well I'm gonna explain to you guys why I ended up in this corner over here but the total group is two, two and a half inches with no flyers. Now, two and a half inches, and I have a, a four shot cluster here that is an inch and a half, okay, inch and a half. Okay, so uh, what happened here? Something definitely happened here to make this group shift up into this corner over here versus this group over here which is more centered okay so when i was when i was sh shooting that group right like i said this is this is what i'm seeing right that's my that's my ghost ring in the back 
okay? That's my post, right? And I'm putting this at the top, at the bottom of the paper, so I get that, that 10 inch rise, okay? Um, and by the way, if you notice that the, 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 the Sierra Match King, the fifth, the, the uh, what are these? These are 77 grains. The 77 grain Sierra Match Kings and the 55 grain Tulas are both about in the same position, about 10, 10 inches high. Okay, this one might be just a, maybe an inch higher. Um, actually, this looks like it's 12 inches high. Let's see from the bottom of the paper, the center of the group. No, it's 10 inches high. Uh, 11, no, actually 11, 11. It went, it went one inch higher. But what's, what's happening here, the Tula is 100 feet per second slower, okay, than your typical 55 grain, okay. The Sierra Mash King is a 77 grain bullet. So these two factors canceled each other out, okay. So the, the, the 55 grain slower Tula came in at the same, you know, at the same elevation as the heavier 77 grain Sierra Mash King, okay. So that explains the, you know, why these are at about the same height. Okay, now uh, as far as when I was aiming, okay, the first time that I was aiming with the Tula, I made a, a conscious effort. There's my ghost ring in the back, okay? And these over these over here are the, the little bunny ears, right? The, the front sight post protectors. Okay, these things over here. Right, you see the, the front sight post protectors here? So I made a really conscious effort. I made a conscious effort to anchor them equally on the ghost ring and make sure I had this equal amount of white space on the sides of those little of those little bunny ears okay um, the second time I shot it which is this time over here so the first time I, I kind of came centered the second time I shot it I kind of just like naturally centered it in the center of the ghost ring but I didn't make that conscious effort to make sure I had the equal amount of light on the side of the little bunny ears over here and that's why i ended up shifting my point of aim slightly to the right so for accuracy shooting you gotta basically use your bunny ears to you know you know make sure you got the an equal amount of light on the bunny ears you know make sure everything is you know use that you, you know don't just use your front side post in the center of your ghost ring also use the bunny ears to make sure everything is centered up um, and then this way you can, cons you know, you can shoot consistently, okay? Um, so that, I think that's really cool uh, with, the, with the iron sights here. Uh, I managed to get a total group of two and a half inches with a cluster of an inch and a half. Now, mind you guys, I don't have really good eyes, okay? Um, first of all, when I'm at 100 yards, that front sight post takes up the entire uh, eight inches going across, okay? So the front sight post is actually from here to here okay and I, I measured this with the calipers i'm going to go into a different video on, on why i measured this with the calipers but that's like a 0.07 uh of an inch wide um so that that went from here to here okay? and it's important to know the width of your front side post for doing wind adjustments um so you can use your front side post to do both wind adjustments and to do range estimation well i'm going to do a completely different video on that because uh, we're going to get into a whole bunch of different details on that. So what I, want, what I wanted to talk about in this video is using your, 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 your iron sights on your AR to do precision, precision shots. And I wanted to show you what happens if you don't use your bunny ears uh, to make sure that you're centered inside of the gun of, 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 the, uh, of the ghost ring. You're going to be slightly off. Now, obviously... Um, I'm still on the paper. I'm still, you know, well with, within, well within a man-sized target. Um, but, but you know, but slightly off over here. So I think that's really cool. I think this is really cool the way this worked out. And like I said, I, um, you know, I got so many ARs that have rails on them and have um, and have uh, red dots on them. So I said, you know, what, let's let's take this one over here and let's make this one retro. So I have something to practice with. Um, now, I got something else to show you guys that I think is really cool. Um, this carry handle here, right, it's not meant for you to carry the gun, okay? Uh, if you notice that there's a hole over here, this was meant, for, this was meant to carry your optic, okay? Uh, yes, this in, in the Vietnam era, this is the type of scope that went on top 
uh, of um, that went on top of a, 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 an AR-15 slash M16. So let's show you guys how this goes on. Now, unlike, like I said, this carry handle here came off of a Colt. This one over here is like a, a cheap Chinese copy. So I don't know how good this is going to be. Uh, but this also does have a range adjustments on it. So you can see it has like, you can set it to one, 200 yards, 300 yards, 400 yards, 500 yards. Um, inside here is basically just a simple duplex. It's got a duplex reticle. Well, it's a four power. I don't think you guys are going to be able to see it. But yeah, it's a, it's a four power. Uh, you might have got a glimpse of it. There it is. So it's got a simple duplex reticle. Um, this should have had mill dots in it. In fact, the directions that came with this scope uh, have instructions for using the mill dots. However, this scope doesn't have mill dots in the reticle. Uh, so I think I got this for something like $55 or something like that. But here's the thing. Uh, I'm not against buying cheap things because it gives you a chance to try things out and see if it's for you or not for you. Um, and it's also really good for demonstration purpose. So the way that goes is that sits in there. And then you take this. That goes in from the bottom. Let me see if I can get this in the... Yeah, let me try to arrest this. By the way, I hope you guys don't mind my voice. I, I do have a little bit of a sore throat. So that's why I sound a little different today. Okay, there we go. So we get that on. Okay, so that goes there. And then what you do is once that goes in place, then you twist this thing around over here. And that tightens that up. Okay, so that's good. So that basically tightens it up, and that's what that looks like. So here's the thing. Like I, like I said, it's good to buy something cheap, test it out, because one of the issues with, with the optic on top of your carry handle, right? like I said, the carry handle was designed to carry your optic, is that now I do have the benefit of I can still see my iron sights in here, but if I want to see my look through the scope, I have to raise my head up. So basically, I'm putting my jaw on. I'm putting my I'm, I'm putting my jaw on the stock so I can get my eye into the right position, uh, so I can see through my scope. And I, I don't love that idea. So again, this is why you know it, it, sometimes it's worth just getting uh, a cheap version of something to try it out and see if it's something that you're gonna like or not gonna like. I mean, I have like. Four years ago, five years ago when I was using this, I was still able to hit targets at 200 yards with this, so it works. Uh, it's just that it doesn't have the mill dots, um, and I don't know how accurate this range adjustment is going to be over here. I got to take that to a different range, which now, like, I'm interested in doing this. I'm going to take this to a different range. I am going to test this out, um, but you do have to put your jaw, you know, you got to raise your head up from normally where you would have your cheek, right? Because here you go, you got the soft padded part of your cheek which absorbs the vibration a little bit better. When you lift your head up and now you got your jaw uh, on the stock, I mean, this is bone over here. The vibration from the recoil is, is going to vibrate through your head a bit more. Okay, so, but uh, there it is. I think it's really cool. Um, you know, it's kind of fun. Like, I haven't used this in like at least three years. And um, it's like all of a sudden I pull this out and it's like, wow, I got a new toy to play with here, you know? And it didn't cost me anything because I already had it. <laughs> So, uh, fun stuff, uh, and like I said, I got the, uh, oh, the other cool thing is when I bought this scope, it also came with this rail over here, um, which basically I can take this off and I can put this rail, which has a Picatinny rail, through that hole and mount that on top of the carry handle, and then I can just use a regular red dot with this. So, uh, you know, not it wasn't terrible for fifty five for the $55 that I, that I paid for at the time. Um, and then uh, the other cool thing is, like I said, I got the bayonet lug over here. Um, I have done a little bit of playing around with this using the light at night. Um, that you know, it can there can be a little bit of conflict between this and the sling. They they kind of work, but like just barely. Okay, uh, but there's it is a little bit close to the sling over here. They do make other bayonet lugs that have holes attached to the lug. It's to 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 the, to the rail itself. 
so that you would use mount the sling onto that instead of this um however it's still you know i mean things can still kind of get in the way but the main reason why i wanted this is for this because sometimes you know like i might go into the woods let's say 2000 feet or something if i'm going into the woods like like you know like 2000 you know like a thousand yards or something i don't want to carry a, a backpack or, or or sandbags you know you know so it's, it's really convenient to you know, bring this bipod with you because this is really light. Okay, I, I just got this bipod. I want to do a separate review on this after I had a little bit more shooting time with it with this because I like it because it has this knob over here, so I don't have to use an Allen key. It just unscrews off. I can do that with my hand without having to use an Allen key. Okay, tighten that back up a little bit, and I can just stick this in my pocket, and that's good. I can walk through the woods like this, and it's you know it's not clunky, it's not sticking around. Um, so yeah, this is really cool. So like I said, uh. The nice thing about this is like, uh, it's like, wow, I got new toys to play with and it didn't cost me anything. Um, except uh, the uh, the bayonet lug was like $13 at Botox and this was $20. Like I said, this is a great deal. I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a separate review on this. I got two of these. These were $20 at Amazon. Uh, I've got lots of bipods, but I, so far I like this one the best. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, make sure you subscribe to all my channels because I try to, uh, stay ahead of the YouTube sensors on YouTube. I got uh, absolute gun rights I got Pocono shooting and I got the original Safa channel, which goes back to 2006 uh, And then I also on the uncensored platforms on Odyssey on Pocono tactical on Ro rumble on Pocono guns and on bit you I'm also Pocono tactical. We'll talk again And also I'm gonna be probably doing at least another two videos um, that's where I go. I'm going to be doing at least another two videos uh, using this gun with the with the with the iron sights that I have in mind. Uh, some cool stuff that I want to show you guys. So uh, look for that coming up.